Hello, everybody, and welcome to Phone Dog Live. I'm sorry, I'm just a smidge late, but we're here now and we're ready to get started. So, uh, welcome, everybody. I'm glad everyone could be here. If you're on Ustream, thanks for watching. I'll be checking the the chat stream, and so I'll be reading your comments. Uh, we'll have a couple of moderators just to keep everything clean. If you're on Facebook, uh, I will also be on Facebook uh, checking that, so feel free to leave your comments there. We have some interesting topics today. There's it's been kind of a busy week in news, and of course I was gone last week, so I'm sorry if you guys missed the, the chat or the stream, um, but we're going to have it every week from now on. So as you can see at the top, if you're on Ustream, if you can see at the top of the chat stream there, uh, the first topic we're going to be talking about is RIM. Uh, if you've been following the news this week, you know that a couple of RIM employees came forward with some letters, anonymous letters, of course, uh, kind of stating their concerns about the company, and, and they were very frank and honest about what's wrong and what should be changed. And uh, so we're going to talk about that, and then the HP touchpad was just released today. And of course, the big you know, tech sites have already gotten their hands on one, and so there's been reviews coming out all week. And so we're going to talk about the HP touchpad and basically how does it compete against the iPad. And then a couple of other little things. Google Plus was just announced this week. Uh, there's been some talk of HP licensing WebOS for other manufacturers to use. And then we'll have an open Q&A at the end. Uh, and you'll be able to just ask me any question that you want. So. First of all, the future of RIM. Now, it's no secret that RIM is struggling. I mean, I think everybody knows that. The numbers may not show it. Um, every time they have their quarterly reports, there's always some worries in the numbers. Um, but the company always says, you know, it's all right because we still sell millions of devices around the world. And they kind of put on this rosy show. But in, the, in reality, RIM is struggling. They're behind the curve. Uh, they desperately need to catch up just in, in every way, form factors, technology, uh, you know, just the phones themselves are, are getting outdated and slow. And so, you know, finally an employee came forward and just, you know, sent a letter to a website and said, you know, hey, this is what's going on and please change this rim. It wasn't just a letter just to say, you know, gosh, I work for RIM and they're terrible. Somebody, you know, somebody else hire me, please. It was, I really care about RIM. You know, guys, please fix these problems. And they were really honest. Um, in this first letter, the person said, uh, for one, they said, focus on the end user experience. Basically, their products are, you know, not as exciting as they used to be. They're, you know, focusing more on just things that don't really matter and features that don't really matter. And they're not creating exciting products the way that they used to. And I thought this was an interesting statement. Uh, the person said, rather than constantly mocking iPhone and Android, we should encourage key decision makers across the board to use these products as a primary device um, so we can understand why our users are switching and get inspiration as to how we can build our next generation products even better. Um, which is, to me, seems like an obvious thing. I mean, I understand that, you know, Apple uh, execs obviously are not going to use an Android smartphone, but surely they have used an Android smartphone just to know, okay, this is what the competition is doing. This is you know, how we can make it better. Um, and to think that BlackBerry exec or RIM execs haven't been doing that, I don't know, it seems a little bit um, short-sighted to me. Uh, the person also pointed out that they're working on too many pointless projects. They're way behind schedule, and as a result, they're having they're forced to rush into releasing a product before it's complete. Uh, case in point, the BlackBerry Playbook, not entirely complete. And uh, you know, to think that a company would would do that would rush to release a project before it's even ready. I don't know. To me. Um, that makes me question the business intelligence of the company to begin with, but and obviously that's that's the problem. You need to get on schedule so your products are ready. Um, and then the person got even more honest. They said BlackBerry smartphone apps suck. They need to make it easier to, easier for developers. They called their 
uh, marketing lazy, which their commercials are admittedly are boring and confusing, um, pointed out that the company's overconfidence clouded good decision making, resulting in the company being three to four years behind Apple and Google. There were three letters um, published anonymously, at least at this point from the last time I checked, there were three letters. And they all three said basically the same thing, that we're working on too many projects, there's just too much to do, and we're not focused on the right things, we're not releasing products that are exciting anymore, and they called for new leadership, basically was the gist of, of all the of the, the letters, we need new leadership. Now, um, Ram, and this is basically just a summary, and then I'll give my thoughts on it, and you guys feel free to give your thoughts on it in the comments. Um, Rim has um, responded to the letters, and basically the response said, uh, first of all, they they don't believe the letters are even from real employees. Um, you know, they didn't say that they just simply were fake, but they obviously questioned the validity of them. And then they said, um, the company's fine. And so, you know, it's ironic that, you know, kudos to Rim for responding so quickly. Um, but these statements basically just confirm the concerns of the employees, um, whether, you know, whether the letters were true or not. And that's kind of getting into an entirely different thing, an entirely different topic. People question the validity of them simply because of the website that published them and the, um, the track record of that website. But that's not what we're, what we're going to get into. I'm just going to take this as, you know, trusting this site and we're just going to say that it's true. Um, so basically, RIM was just confirming the concerns of these employees. The employees were saying that there's a huge problem, and RIM is simply ignoring it. And RIM it just did just that. The employees pointed out a huge problem, and RIM said, no, everything's fine. We're, we're shipping millions of devices. Everything's cool. So, you know, um, it seems uh, like RIM should be in panic mode, and, and who knows if they are. I mean, we don't know if this was a wake-up call for them, or if they're just going to kind of truck along as normal. Um, and to me, after, you know, following the the history of RIM, uh, you know, even before I joined Phone Dog, the fact is, and, and everybody knows it, that RIM has been too stubborn for too long, and now they're reaping the consequences. They refuse to change, which is a noble stance in some ways, but a foolish one in others. True, the BlackBerry form factor was excellent and is still excellent but that doesn't mean that you can't have other form factors they refuse to use touchscreen technology on their devices until now you know for what, what like three four years after the iPhone came out you know they refuse to adopt all of these technologies and now it's showing um, and it's true hindsight is 2020 I've in all, all the articles I've read I've seen people comment on that well it's easy to say that now because you know hindsight is 2020, so at the time it may have seemed like a good idea to not change. But hindsight is 2020, true. But that doesn't mean that foresight is 2200, which is terrible vision if you don't know the numbers. Um, so you know maybe in January 2007, when Apple first announced the iPhone, maybe back then it seemed like kind of an asinine attempt. You know maybe. BlackBerry could have their laugh and say, well, that's kind of a weird product, you know, it's you know, good for you, Apple. But it should have only taken six months to a year to see that Apple was on to something. Um, and they didn't, you know. They're, the fact that RIM is just now releasing touchscreen devices with one gigahertz processors, which is something that the competition has been using for over a year, the fact that they're just now doing that is laughable, at the very least. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I think, you know, maybe it is the leadership, maybe it is the fact that these two co-CEOs just didn't have the right vision for the company. Maybe they had the right vision for the company to get it started and to get it where it was as being a leader in the mobile industry. But... Once that change started happening, they maybe they weren't the right people, and so um, we'll have to see how RIM responds to this. You know, obviously we got the you know the official response, but that's you know that's pub publicity stuff. Um, we'll have to see how the company actually if the company actually does anything. Um, 
Now, RIM has said that they will be addressing the uh, the thing with the co-CEO. So, you know, right now they have the two guys that are the co-CEO and co-chairman. And uh, investors and now these employees have called for a new leadership. And so they will have uh, RIM stated that an independent a group of direct or group of independent directors will meet and will evaluate the situation and then will take action whether it's to hire new guys or you know get a new CEO which I have a feeling that's what's going to happen I think it's pretty obvious that RIM um, they can't keep doing what they're doing basically you know it's great that the new Blackberry Bold has a touch screen but it's essentially still the same exact phone that they've been putting out for you know ten years. So um, they need they need something new. So um, it's interesting, you know. And, and reading the letters, it was just like wow, that's you know that's a pull of stuff there. And and I know people called them out for being anonymous. Like if you really wanted to help, you know, you would put your name on it and sign it. And you know, maybe they had worries about keeping their job, but, but who knows? And then maybe it's Maybe the letters aren't real, um, but I think even without the letters, uh, we knew that Rim was having some problems, and so um, we'll have to see. We'll have to see what they do about this. I'm uh, I'm reading the comments on UStream. Let me see. I thought that Rim would have done well this year because it seemed like that Blackberries were on pretty much every teenager's Christmas list last year. Trying and failing is still failing. Don't know if Rim realizes that. Blackberry need to step up their game. Um, funny how one gigahertz processors are considered outdated now. Uh, that's that's a good point. Um, yeah, so uh, hopefully RIM will will catch on and uh, you know maybe get some new visionaries in there and and you know listen to this advice. You know a lot of this is like just workplace problems. I mean everybody has problems in the workplace. When I read one of the letters, the woman or yeah, I'm assuming it was a woman just because of the way it was written. Um, <clears throat> she said that, you know, the managers, they, they had favorites, and they promoted people that weren't qualified, and, you know, and I should have been promoted. That sounds exactly like stuff that I hear all the time in an office environment. So some of this is just, like, workplace drama. But um, definitely, like they brought out, um, developer support, they need to make um, their SDK development platform a lot easier to use um, and then creating innovative devices and then marketing. I mean, I don't know if you guys watched those commercials that were just out maybe six months ago about, Black, about BlackBerry Messenger. Um, they were really boring, but also like, how does that relate to me? I don't, I don't know if you guys remember those. So, um, Hopefully they'll work. They'll work on that. So, but that's Rim, and so again, like I say, you know, we'll have to we'll have to wait and see how Rim responds to it. See if they do anything about it, and then see if they decide to get a new CEO. Um, but I think it's exciting, and I think that Rim still has plenty to do. I mean, this it's not like Blackberries aren't still useful. They are. Um, you just have to make them better and just keep up with the competition. So, um, next topic is the touchpad the HP touchpad just released today we've seen a lot of reviews if you're like me you've been reading reviews just you know all over the place I've seen so many and I've read so many um, and I was you know pretty excited about this one because I've always said that WebOS is one of the greatest operating systems out there and I'm not alone I think a lot of people feel that way there's not a lot of people that have a WebOS device but the operating system has earned respect in the tech world uh, for being elegant, simple, intuitive, um, just a great operating system. So to see another device using it and to see it keep growing, I think, is pretty exciting. So uh, the reviews are in. And basically, you know, to sum it up, what I've been hearing is that the software is excellent. The hardware is not uh, the software, like I said, WebOS is great. You know, you have cards, which makes multitasking just completely easy. The notification system is, is simple. Um, you have the, the touch to share. 
uh, which I have a picture of that. If you guys haven't seen some of the features of um, the touchpad, this is touch to share, where you can just put the phone to the tablet and then it'll sync either um, from the phone to the tablet or tablet to the phone, the web page that you're viewing. So it's just the software is great. Now they said the hardware is a different story. Apparently the touchpad is bulky, it's heavy, and a fingerprint magnet. Now, you know, those may seem like small things. I mean, so it's a fingerprint magnet. I mean, get a case, you know, not a big deal. Um, but going deeper into the hardware, uh, despite the fact that it ships with a 1.2 gigahertz dual core processor, a lot of reviewers consistently say that the tablet was laggy, buggy, and just generally slow. And I read that all the way from, you know, in gadget to pre central. Um, you know, from completely unbiased to, well, all <laughs> unbiased, and then, you know, even websites like Macworld, which obviously they're going to bash it. But, I mean, they said it was laggy, Precentral said it was laggy, and Gadget, same thing. So, kind of disappointing. I mean, you think a dual-core processor it probably has something to do with a multitasking feature. That tends to slow down a device. Um, but they all said it was, it was kind of to the point where it was a little frustrating and, and just... Even though the tablet was decent, the majority of the people said they would have a hard time recommending it over the iPad, which is like the tablet to beat. Um, I'm thinking that maybe the next generation model may be better, um, and maybe and maybe just a software update will fix all those problems. I mean, maybe some of the bugs and the lagginess can be fixed with a software update. You know, who knows? Uh, HP openly acknowledged that the touchpad was not meant to compete with the iPad, but was instead more of an enterprise device. And so that was kind of the impression that I got, you know, from the start. If you look at the device, there's no rear-facing camera. There's a front-facing camera, but there's no rear-facing camera. There's no camera app. There's no YouTube app. There's no HP media app or store of any kind um, for music or movies. There's only 300 touchpad-specific apps, so not a lot of apps. And most of the standout features are business and communication oriented anyway. So, um, you know, it's nice that HP is actually saying like, hey, we're not trying to kill the iPad, you know, which is fine. It doesn't have to be an iPad killer in order to be successful. Um, and it is more of perhaps a business or enterprise device. Um, and I know a lot of people that enjoy WebOS because it's kind of a more grown up, mature operating system. There's no, as people say, cartoonish widgets, They're not a bunch of pages of apps. It's very simple, um, very to the point. The operating system seems made more for getting things done and not finding something to do when you're bored. So, you know, that's not going to appeal to everyone, but I think there's definitely a lot of people that could find the touchpad very useful. Now, in terms of lagginess, um, and, you know, is it slow and is, are there a lot of bugs? You know, that obviously is a problem, which is why I said, you know, maybe the next generation model will be better, which I think a lot of people recognize that anyway. I mean, I think I've, you know, every time a first gen product comes out, I hear people saying, you know, never buy the first generation product, always wait for the second one. So probably the same thing would be true here. Um, but overall, it seemed like a decent device, just still maybe needs a little bit of work on the hardware front. So, um, you know, hopefully the second one will be better. I say that a lot, hopefully. I, it's, I guess I'm optimistic, but um, I, I say hopefully in this case because WebOS is awesome, and uh, I think it should be used a lot more, and so um, I'm glad that it is, and uh, we'll, see how, we'll see how people pick up on this. Uh, let me go to the comments in Ustream and see what you guys think about this. Um, let me make sure I'm all the way at the bottom. Um, how is it that while testing they don't notice how laggy it is and don't improve on it? That's a good point. Uh, my problem with WebOS is the same as Windows Phone 7, mediocre hardware. I've heard a small group have experienced hardware defects with the Sam Samsung Tab. Uh, Sydney, can you mod me please? Yes, thank you for asking. Um, Apple is too restricted. So, yeah, I see, you know, kind of, you know, basically the same thing. No one's really, like, ecstatic about it. But from the reviews, it seems like like a decent tablet. And so um, I think it's been great. I know I probably won't get one just because I, I enjoy Android. I like 
widgets and the cartoonish thing. I actually love that. I mean, my favorite UI is TouchWiz, so that gives you an idea of, of you know what I look for in a in a phone and what I use it for. So um, more on WebOS, and this is you know kind of a small thing. Not a lot of Android news actually this week, so um, you know kind of surprising there. But um, uh, there has there have been talks. There were talks in the past of HP licensing WebOS, and I was ask, asked about this. I think week before last, someone asked me, and I said, um, you know, yeah, I don't really think it'll happen. We had heard it, but we had, hadn't heard anything since then, so it kind of just seemed to like fade off, and it was kind of just this small rumor. Well, now we've heard more, um, and straight from HP CEO Leo Apotheker. He confirmed that HP has been in talks with a number of companies about licensing WebOS, and Bloomberg reported that people close to the matter, uh, they say that Samsung is one of the companies. Now, that doesn't mean that Samsung, excuse me, that doesn't mean that Samsung will be the company that HP chooses, or if there's only going to be one company. Um, it just means that they've been talking with Samsung. So, it's possible that in the next year we could see a Samsung device with WebOS or you know an HTC device with WebOS. Now, uh, John Rubenstein, who's with HP, he said that HP isn't interested in playing second fiddle with a company primarily focused on Android or Windows Phone. So, you know, that's kind of, I mean, HTC is pretty much focused on Android, and then Windows Phone is kind of like their secondary. Samsung, uh, you know, they make feature phones, they make, you know, they've done Android, they've done Windows Phone 7, um, so, you know, Samsung might be a little bit better option for um, for HP, so we'll have to see. And then the other question is, will Samsung skin it? Because, you know, Samsung loves skinning stuff. Um, I think the Samsung Galaxy Tab is is not the only uh, Android tablet and or Honeycomb tablet with a skin, but it was one of the first ones, I think. Um, when everyone else was coming out with stock Honeycomb tablets, Sam was, Samsung was like, let's skin it, let's put a skin on that, even though it wasn't really made for that, but, and it, they didn't really change it that much either, Honeycomb with Samsung, with TouchWiz UX, there's not really a whole lot of changes, but it's like they just wanted to do something, I don't know, it's like they get bored and they just like putting skins on stuff, I don't know, so uh, well, maybe in the next year, you know, we'll see other, we'll see some Samsung's with WebOS, or, you know, maybe Motorola with WebOS, um, who knows? But that's interesting, so uh, I wanted to mention that. And then lastly, last main topic is uh, Google Plus was just announced this week. And this isn't really so much like cell phones, except that it is Google and there's an Android app for it, so, you know, I can talk about it. Um, so Google Plus is Google's new attempt at a... Um, at a social network. There was Google Buzz. That didn't really work out so well. Um, I think it was just too complicated and people didn't really get it and they were just like, just got frustrated with it and didn't care. So that didn't really work out too well. Um, Google Plus seems to be a lot more simple. Now, uh, you have to get an invitation. Right now, you have to get an invitation. So, um, you know, not a whole lot of people have been able to use it. I haven't been able to use it. Um, I'm probably going to, you know, wait to read some initial reviews before I actually check it out. I might not. Um, anyway, so here are some quick initial features uh, with Google+. Plus. So you have basically your stream. Uh, here's a sample picture from a review that someone else did of the stream. And you can see it's, you know, pretty basic. Kind of like Facebook, you know, you post stuff, comments, and then people can respond to it. But there's other features like Google, like circles. So you have, you know, all of these friends or people in your address book, um, and maybe with certain people you talk about technology, and then certain people you talk about, you know, they're your family and they don't care about technology. So when you post something, you might not want it to be available to every single person in your contact list. So you can create circles where you say, okay, I want this circle is related to this topic, and this circle is related to this topic, and then whenever you post a new message or a new comment, it's for, you know, a specific circle of people. So kind of interesting, makes a little more 
specific, but still a simple idea. You then have uh, Hangouts, which is kind of an interesting thing. So you can see here, there's a person, it's just like a video chat, and you basically just open up a Hangout. You say like, you know, hey, I'm, I wanna hang out, and then whoever happens to be online at the same time or sees it, they can come and hang out. It's all with video chat. You can do audio only too, I believe. But it's just everyone, you know, you don't have to, you know, go to a bar or a restaurant or movies to hang out. If you're all like in college or at work or, you know, you're at home or you're grounded or whatever, you can all just be online and still see each other and still have a cool conversation. So hangouts, again, kind of a, a useful idea there. Uh, and then there was, there's Sparks. Okay, and then Sparks is the third kind of big idea with Google+. Plus. Um, Sparks is where, this is one of the features that I think is not really as necessary or interesting, but I'm just going to tell you guys about it. Um, you put in your interest. So you say, I'm interested in cell phones, or I'm interested in Android, BlackBerry, and um, I'm interested in, you know, what? comic books. Okay, so you put in your interests, and then it will find uh, information, you know, related to that interest. It will find videos, and maybe websites, pictures, and then if, you know, it shows you, okay, here's a video on Android that you may like. So you watch and you like it, and then you can share it with people, um, just like you could like anything else, but it's a lot easier to just say share with these people. You have to go on the web to find it and put a link. It's just, it's all there. That one to me, you know, kind of not as useful because, you know, I put in my interest and it's kind of just, it just brings up a generic list of like everything Android or everything comic books. So maybe not as useful. But, um, so anyway, those are the three main features of Google Plus, the Hangouts, Circles, and Sparks. I don't know, I just talked about that one. I almost forgot about it. So from the reviews that I've been reading, uh, everything seems kind of positive uh, so far. Um, I think it's going to take a little while to see if it actually does catch on, um, but people are saying that it's a lot simpler than Google Buzz. Uh, it just seems to work a lot better. I've, you know, people on, on Twitter that, um, that I know, they say that they kind of just stopped using Facebook in the past week and just started using Google+. Plus. So, um, so yeah, kind of interesting. You know, like I said, I don't really know if, you know, my thing is that why does everyone says this is Google's answer to Facebook? And I'm just like, why do they have to have an answer to Facebook? I mean, why can't Google, you know, does Google have to do everything that every, everyone else does? I mean, they have to have a phone and they have to have a tablet and they have to have a web browser and then they have to have a laptop and oh, now we got Facebook. We have to have a social network. I mean, you don't have to do everything just because someone else is doing it. Um, I mean, unless they just want to, but it's like they tried and it failed, and so now they're trying again. It's like they want so desperately to have a social network, and I just don't understand. But um, anyway, that's Google Buzz. Uh, like I said, I haven't tried. I haven't gotten an, an, an invitation, um, and you know, I I may try it. I think there's just so many social networks out there, and I'm not a really big social networking person. I use Twitter, but I really only use it for um, talking about, you know, mobile news and technology or, you know, talking with my coworkers since I, you know, we never see each other in real life or in person. Um, but like Facebook, I really don't ever use Facebook except for our open Q&A on, on Tuesday that I do and for this. Um, I never really got into Facebook. Google Plus is, you know, another social network. I mean, I never had a MySpace page. So I, just, I don't know, there's so many, um, you know, we'll have to see if, if this one works out. But um, the reviews so far seem to be, you know, pretty positive. Let me check out the comments on Ustream and see what you guys think. Um, <clears throat> I use Twitter to enter contests and win stuff. Twitter is beast. Why is Facebook getting boring? I don't understand what else you want to communicate, okay? The Hangouts is their answer to FaceTime Skype also. Good point, yeah. I have Google Talk video already built in like Nexus on my Rude Evo. Good point. Uh, I use Facebook sometimes. I need all people in here to follow me. Okay, I don't even use Twitter. Sydney, get your Twitter game up. My Twitter game. 
I use Twitter sometimes. Anyway, so uh, it looks like everyone just uses Twitter. Um, I've always wondered the popularity between Facebook and Twitter. I know there's there's the numbers out there, um, but it just seems like there's more people that actually focus on Twitter, and then Facebook's kind of like that other page that they have. But anyway, so that's Google Plus, and uh, I think I showed you guys everything that I could. There's the circles, hangouts, the stream. Um, I have all these pictures. I like using pictures. Have you guys noticed that every week I talk about pictures? So uh, that was that's the last topic. Um, if you have any thoughts on those the touchpad, uh, the future of RIM, Google Plus, and HP licensing, you, know, you can continue to leave your comments in the comment section. Um, sec sound like I said suction, but I, I said section. Anyway, so. Um, now it is open Q&A time, and I kind of rushed through all of those topics, so we have like half an hour of open Q&A. I always worry that um, I'm not going to have enough time to get to all of my topics, and so I rush through them, and so it's like every week it gets shorter and shorter, and so I need to, I need to be better at time management, but you know, don't we all? Uh, so yeah, open Q&A time. So uh, feel free to leave your comments on Ustream or on Facebook. It sounds like something is burning. That's scary. Um, and I'll, on Facebook, too, I'll be checking that. Uh, and of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, I forgot to mention in the intro, but if you're watching on YouTube, you can also leave your comments you know, in the comments section for this video, and I'll be checking those comments later on. Uh, and uh, so, you know, feel free to leave those there. And also, thank you for watching if you're watching this on YouTube. But anyway, so open Q&A time, and you can ask me anything. Uh, on Facebook, can you see our comments? Yes, I can. I just, I hadn't checked them at the time. Uh, I love you. You're so cool. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, uh, back to you, stream. Uh, Photon 4G is a beast phone. Kinda like iMessage for iOS, okay. Do you have any news on the Motorola Triumph for Virgin Mobile? Uh, I think just the initial news, uh, that's all we got. Um, oh, we got a possible release date, July 19th, which is, you know, 18 days away, so yeah, pretty soon. And then we heard the price could be about $300. We originally heard sub 300 so we were thinking like maybe 200 250 but then we heard the price would be 299 So that's what they meant by sub-300. It's $1 less. I hate it when companies do that. But So here the price could be 300 Obviously no contract, so that's the price you're going to pay. Kind of expensive, but again, this is a great device for a prepaid carrier. It's going to be excellent. So um, that's all the new stuff we have for the Triumph. <clears throat> Uh, Atlanta Thrasher sold to Winnipeg. What's up with that? I don't know. When is the next phone to phone dog contest going to start? Actually, we're starting a contest um, pretty soon. If we haven't started it already, I can uh, show you guys the um, the video if you want to see it. Um, let me see if I can show you. Okay, so here's the video of our next contest. Is called the greatest, I think it's greatest tech giveaway ever. So here it is. This is the video, and kaboom! Greatest tech giveaway ever. Focused spotlight on greatest tech giveaway ever. And that's pretty much it. Sound effects were mine. I hope you enjoyed them. Um, and that's the next giveaway that we're doing. And uh, when does it start? I'll have to check the email again. Um, don't show it. Okay, probably my memory is crap. Sydney, you are good people. Follow me back. Boom. <laughs> uh, I entered. Thank you. I'm glad you guys enjoyed my sound effects there. Um, I just realized that whenever I show videos, it doesn't... I don't think it shows the sound for you guys. And so I wanted to make sure you got the kaboom there. Okay, that's what I've got. A smartphone with calendar sync and all that fancy stuff. Sydney, any specs on the Droid 3 dates or prices? We just got confirmation of the specs for the Droid 3. Uh, and they were exactly what they what we thought they would be. So there's nothing new here. Um, but just so you know, I'll, I'll, I'll say them again. A uh, 4-inch QHD display, 1 gigahertz dual-core processor, 8 megapixel camera, and a front-facing camera. And, oh wait, is that the right thing that I'm talking about? 
maybe. And it's going to be a world phone. Hopefully I'm, I have the right, I'm talking about the right phone here. But anyway, we just got confirmation. So those are the specs that we already thought, and now it's, we know that they're actually true. Okay, Droid 3 is a fail, no 4G. Yeah, I don't know what's up with Motorola. They like, you know, Droid X2 should have been a 4G phone. Droid 3 should be a 4G phone, but whatevs. Do you think teens will love the touchpad? No, it's not really a, a teen device. Like I said earlier, more like a business enterprise phone or tablet. Um, or, you know, f you know, a lot of people like, like I said, the kind of more adult, grown-up operating system. Very simple, not a lot of apps. You, know, you, you get it, you pick it up, you, do, you get something done, and then that's it. You don't have to play around with it for an hour. Um, Droid 3 is going to be expensive. Any future smartphones for Verizon? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Stewie, I missed your question. I use extended controls. Could that be what lags up my phone? Oh, you're talking to somebody else. Never mind. How big is too big? There's a phone that's 4.7 inches. I thought 4.3 was massive. Yeah, the phone you're talking about, I forgot I was going to mention that. It's the HTC Eternity, and I don't have a picture right now. I could get it, but it would take a couple minutes. Um, the HTC Eternity, and it's going to have a 4.7-inch display, which is huge, you know, for a phone. Um, a 1.5 gigahertz processor and an 8 megapixel camera. Yeah, 4.7 inches, that's a large display. How big is too big? If people buy it, then it's not too big. But, you know, I don't, for me, I think that that phone would be too big for me. What do you think of the AT, of the T-Mobile AT&T merger? Um, I know a lot of people are hating on it, but I'm just like, you know what? I think this could be good because AT&T needs Spectrum. With the deal, they get Spectrum, and then T-Mobile gets to also gets spectrum and more towers so yeah you know you could think of it as being like a monopoly and they're gonna take over the world but you know the bottom line is that there's bad people everywhere and they're all trying to screw up the world so you might as you can't stop them you might as well try to find the good stuff in it so I'm just trying to find the good stuff in it if it does go through um, we're seeing more and more resistance to it from the government so we'll have to see if it even goes through <clears throat> Sydney, what can you do to try to eliminate lag and force closes on an Android phone? Like my HTC Desire HG that likes to lag and crash, and I don't know why. And I like using it just not when it crashes. Um, you don't like using your phone like when it crashes? That's so weird. Um, to eliminate lag, you have a Desire HD. Wow. You know, a lot of it... Um, force closes... Uh, you know, I read, I've read several articles lately about um, task managers, and we published an article on phonedoc.com, and people said that task managers are bad, you know, only noobs use them and don't use it, it's pointless, it's like, you know, bloatware and don't get it. Um, I don't necessarily agree with that, because that statement is too general. You can't just say that task managers are bad. Okay, you can say, in some cases, they're bad. Don't use it for this, but use it for this, and then it's good. See, I think the, the statement that task managers are bad and pointless, that's too general and therefore not true. Um, general statements are not true because, you know, they're general. You know, nothing ever covers everything except for that statement. <laughs> so, okay, so with task managers, with like force closing, um, maybe you have an app that's kind of just a really buggy app, and uh, you know, maybe you opened it, you know, maybe like a day ago or something, or maybe a couple hours ago, and you closed it, but it never stopped, it never actually closed, and so then it kind of just like freezes or gets messed up in your system, so the next time you open it, or the next time you open another app, everything is kind of confused, Sometimes for certain apps, you need to just close it, which is what a task manager is for. You can say, okay, I want to end this app. You know, that could help with that. Maybe there's an app that's kind of just bugging up your system, and so you need to make sure that when you close it, you actually close it. That could help. It could also help eliminate lag. Now, what you don't want to use a task manager for is like every five minutes, end all. You know, don't do that because like weather, need, that needs to run constantly, Twitter needs to run constantly, um, but you can be choosy with it, like every five minutes, look at your task manager and say, okay, see, or um, 
okay, the web browser is running, and I closed the web browser like an hour ago. Into that. Um, or, okay, YouTube is running, and I closed YouTube like an hour ago. Into that. You know, do that maybe if you want to every so often. Um, and that mean, that's what you can use a task manager for, and it may help with that. Um, I don't like the statement that task managers are bad. That's not true. Um, they're bad in certain cases. You need to know how to use it right. But you don't have to be a genius to know how to use it right. Um, it would take you like 10 minutes of thinking about it to figure it out, really. Um, I just talked for like 10 minutes about something that you guys probably don't even care about, but it was a rant, and I've been wanting to say it for a long time, so there it is. Okay, in your opinion, what's the best tablet out there? Well, you know, yeah, you could say the iPad, uh, you could say the Galaxy Tab, um, I think those are kind of in the top echelon right now, very, very popular and, and great devices. Yeah, you have other new ones coming out, like um, from uh, Toshiba, you know, they just released their new one. And the specs are great, you know, dual core processor. I think, you know, Samsung and Apple, they have a good reputation in making you know, these tablets and products. So it seems like from reviews and, you know, talking with other people that have review tablets, um, Galaxy Tab seems to be up there in their list, and then the iPad, of course, seems to be up there. Um, the Transformer, the Asus ePad Transformer, has gotten great reviews, excellent reviews, but kind of more for like, because it has the actual physical keyboard and can kind of be a netbook, more like for that use, not necessarily just to just the tablet alone. But if you like that form factor, it's the best of that kind. Um, and then, what was I going to say after that? Um, I forgot what I was going to say. I was going to say something really insightful and helpful, but I forgot. So, sorry. Um, it doesn't matter what you say. <laughs> okay. Uh, Sony tablets coming out soon. Also, yeah, interesting form factors, which we talked about that um, week before last, I think. The Sony, the Sony S2, the S2 has two displays. And it's a clamshell. And then it's kind of like a cylinder when it's closed. But it's a clamshell. Interesting. I don't know if that's going to go over too well, but, you know. Um, Playbook. Playbook hasn't really gotten great reviews. I'm going to jump over, over to Facebook because I have missed. I haven't checked that in a few minutes. So let me check Facebook. And I have to get a drink. I apologize. My voice was getting a little bit rough. Okay, what are your thoughts on the Evo 3D? My thoughts are, you know, the original Evo, when it came out, it was one of the best devices of that year. And I think the Evo 3D is going to be the same. Um, HTC already makes excellent smartphones. And then just the specs, dual core processor, it's a 3D phone, which is cool. 4G, um, has a beautiful display, great graphics. Um, so I think it's going to be one of the best phones of the year. Another question from Facebook, have you heard any rumors on the Galaxy S2 release date, particularly on Sprint? I heard maybe at the end of July. Uh, we haven't really heard anything concrete. Now, we just heard that, you know, Europe obviously already has it. We just heard that Canada is about to get it. So, you know, should be sometime soon this summer. I mean, I would be surprised if it didn't come out in the next couple of months. Um, okay, so heading back over to Ustream. Uh... Bro, Motorola Photon, I'm so impressed with that phone. Are you talking to me? Calling me bro? I don't know. Um, Sydney, any future Verizon smartphones? Droid Bionic still coming. We, I don't know about the Droid Bionic. Um, you know, we've heard it is coming, it's not coming, it's been changed to the Motorola Targa, that it's actually that phone. And then they were like, no, it's the Bionic. And then we were like, no, it's not coming. Basically, I really don't know. Um, any other phones coming to Verizon? Let me, let me check. Verizon. Um, the BlackBerry Bold Touch, that should be coming to Verizon uh, maybe in September, possibly. The Bionic. Um, we heard that Verizon may be getting some sort of phone that looks like the Epic. It's made by Samsung, and it looks exactly like the Epic. Um, but it's for Verizon, so no, you know, no really, not a lot of information on that. But you know, we have that rumor. Um, let me see other phones. 
Uh, we heard of a Pantech. Oh, that's a feature phone. Never mind. Um, Galaxy S2. That's coming to Verizon eventually. Uh, and then that's it. That's all I've. That's all I've heard. But you know, you really don't have to wait. Verizon has a, a lot of excellent smartphones. So you really, there's no reason to wait. You could get one right now. Um, or if you want to wait for the Galaxy S2, you could do that. How often are these broadcasts? Every week at Friday. At Friday. On Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, thoughts on AT&T? I just commented on that. Uh, should I get the Evo 3D or wait for the Photon or GS2? Uh, Evo 3D, Galaxy S2, or the... Now, the Motorola Photon... <clears throat> um, you know, really, those spec... I mean, they all have a dual-core processor. They all have a large, beautiful display. You know, latest version of Android, 4G. You know, pretty, you know, probably. Um, Galaxy S2 probably at 4G. Um, so which one should you get? Since the specs are so much similar and performance is probably going to be about the same, I would say the biggest determining factor, and I say this a lot, would just be which UI you prefer. The Evo 3D has HTC Sense, which is arguably the most popular UI. Uh, the Photon will have Moto Blur, which is arguably the worst UI in cell phone history. Uh, and then the Galaxy S2 will have, will have TouchWiz, which is sort of like, you either love it or you hate it. So, um, you know, you can just look at both of them and see, what, or all three of them and see which one you prefer. I, Moto Blur, I would kind of shy away from that. Um, uh, between the Evo and the Galaxy S2, just check out the UI. But really, in terms of performance and specs, I mean, they're all about the same. The Evo has 3D capabilities, but that's, I mean, to me, that's more of a gimmick than anything. Um, okay, I missed a bunch of questions. Thoughts on ZTE Blade? Let me see, do I have any info on that? I've heard of it, but I don't know if I wrote anything down. I didn't, so I'll have to Google it and get a refresh. ZTE Blade. Um, okay, I remember somebody asked me about this. Um, AMOLED Display 3.5 inch. Um, Android OS. What's the processor? 600 megahertz processor. Okay, you know, I haven't actually personally used it, so I can't tell you about performance. Um, and ZTE isn't a popular American company, so I don't know their history. Honestly, I probably wouldn't be the best person to ask about that. How do you Google it? Yeah, I know, it's Google is amazing. Um, Huawei Glory Info, please, okay. Now that I do know, uh, let me see, the latest info on the Huawei, Huawei, Huawei Glory, 4-inch um, display, 1.4 gigahertz Qualcomm processor, which is pretty cool, 8 megapixel camera with an LED flash, Android 2.3 with a custom skin, coming to Cricut November for $299, that's all I know. Uh, did I miss the Google Plus subject? Yes, you did. I'm sorry, but you can watch the recording. I'm going to have it up on YouTube, and I'll have a in the description box. I'll have the timeline of the topics we discuss. You can just click on the correct time, and it'll jump right to that topic. Uh, any new Verizon feature phones? Uh, you know, we really don't hear a lot of rumors about Verizon feature or about feature phones. Um, I think I mentioned earlier something about a Pantech. Uh, yeah, Pantech. We don't have a name for it. Uh, but it runs the Brew mobile platform, which is, you know, the growing in popularity. Uh, it's just a feature phone. That's all I really know for now. It would be a 3G phone. Um, but, you know, we don't really hear about feature phones until they come out because they're just not very popular. My son hates his Samsung craft. Should I switch him, should I switch him to Sprint with me? Uh, sure, you know, if you want to. Um, on Sprint, you have great options for feature phones. Uh, you have the LG Rumor Touch, which, you know, in history is, you know, one of the best messaging phones. Um, and then you have the Kyocera, or the, the um, Sanyo Innuendo, which is also a great messaging phone. Uh, and, yeah, I'd say those to be the best ones. Um, are they better than the Samsung Craft? You know, if he hates his Craft, then probably, yeah, because... 
you know, if he hates it, then anything is going to be better than that phone. I'd say probably check out the LG Rumor Touch. I think you know, a lot of teenagers like that phone. Um, imagine the day that feature phones have one gigahertz processors, right? What do you feel about HTC Facebook phone? Uh, you know, interesting. I never use Facebook, so I don't really see the usefulness of it. And uh, it's just a button. All, you know, all they added was a button. So, I don't know, maybe a gimmick, but then again, it could be useful. We haven't gotten our review unit yet, so I'm not sure. You know, we haven't done a review on it. Uh, okay, a question on Facebook. Evo 3D or Sensation? This is very similar to the question earlier about Evo versus uh, Photon versus Galaxy S2. Specs are very, very similar. You know, dual core processor, great display, 4G. Um, again, it's just based on um, the UI, and really, I mean, it's the same UI. So, um, I guess 3D capabilities, I mean, if that really does it for you, um, I mean, I'm looking at the specs, and uh, I mean, I can't see any large reason to get one over the other. So, if you're on Sprint, go with the Evo. If you're on T-Mobile, go with the Sensation. I guess that's all I'd have to say. Um, yeah, I mean, there's no really like glaring reason why one phone is better than the other. Any news on the Samsung Galaxy Z? Uh, no, not from the original report. Um, I think. We just got word that it's going to be released in Sweden, so that's the latest I have. Do you know if the Korean Evo 4G Plus is coming to the U.S.? Uh, you know, we just heard about that. Let me see, HTC Evo 4G Plus. If you guys haven't heard about the Evo 4G Plus, it is... Where did it go? On my sheet. Um, Evo... Oh, wow. I didn't write it down. That's... Stupid. Well, anyway, if you haven't heard about the Evo 4G Plus, it's kind of interesting because it's we have the Evo 3D, but the 4G Plus is you know not 3D, but still kind of a step up from the Evo 4G. Do I know if it's coming to the U.S.? Uh, we haven't heard a lot of any confirmation on that. What are some cons for the HTC HD7? And if you had a choice, which would you choose, LG or Windows? Well. I don't know, the last question, um, I mean, LG is a manufacturer, is hardware, and Windows is operating system, so I don't really know what you mean by that. Um, some cons to the HD7, um, let me see if I can think of any, um, HTC HD7, I mean, you know, I watched the review, and you know, it just depends if you like Windows Phone Seven. If you if you like a lot of apps, um, Windows Phone Seven is probably not the best operating system for you. I mean, the the market is is there and is growing, but still not as many apps as Android and iOS. So I'd say that's probably the biggest thing, and that's and that's just Windows Phone Seven. There's not a whole lot of apps. Um, other than that, the device. You know, I watched the review, and it was a great device. So I, you know. To me, I, I can't really think of any major cons except for just that. Not a whole lot of app support um, for Windows Phone 7, but it's it's growing. Okay, going back to Ustream. Uh, and we have five minutes left. Five minutos. So I'll try to get some last-minute questions. Will the Huawei Glory be coming to Metro PCS? I don't know. We haven't heard about that. I wondered that whenever I first heard it, but we haven't heard that yet. Um, what is... ZTE. Um, that's how I pronounce it, and actually, I don't know if, because it's not an American company, so somebody correct me if there's some other non American way to say that. But it's a manufacturing company. Um, where is it? Uh, Asian? Is it J Japanese or Korean or something like that? Um, okay, what do you think of the Arcos 101 G9? Gosh, I don't even know. Um, Arcos 1G9. Uh, okay. Android 3.1. Okay. 1.5 gigahertz processor. Wow. I don't know why I haven't heard of this. Um, that's kind of surprising. Arcos had a great history of making tablets even before Apple made the iPad. 
and they've just gotten better. So this one, um, a dual core OMAP four processor, so it should be pretty fast. Um, the display, an eight inch panels. It sounds like a great tablet. I, you know, again, I haven't used it. Um, I honestly, I haven't even heard about it, which is kind of embarrassing. But um, so I mean, it sounds like a great tablet, but I can't tell you my personal thoughts on it because, like I said, I, I haven't used it. Um, just buy me some fish and chips when I hit the UK next time, okay? When you test for battery life, do you have 3G turned on the whole day? Yes, of course. Um, I have it on, and then I'll have Wi-Fi on, uh, off and on. When I have it on, I'm trying to think, when I have it on standby, I think I usually turn Wi-Fi off, but then whenever I'm using it, I'll have, because, you know, usually when I'm at home or out and about, you know, I use Wi-Fi, and so I try to make it as realistic as possible of, you know, a real person using this phone. Um, but of course I have 3G on all day because that's what people do with their phones. I'm going to upgrade to a new phone sometime next week. Which phone do you recommend? You know, I get asked that question a lot, and it's very general. Um, there's like hundreds of phones on the market, and so you can't just ask me, like, which phone should I get? You have to give me a carrier, uh, operating system, you know, do you want a keyboard, price range? You have to give me some more details like that. Um, T-Mobile, okay, you're on T-Mobile. Okay, what is an, the average on Quadrant Standard for Optimus One phones? Um, I have an Optimus One here, so I can check if I still have the app. Uh, and I don't, so I'll have to download it, because I don't remember the numbers. Uh, let me see if I can download it for you in the next two minutes. Um, okay, so you're on T-Mobile, and that's all you have for me. So, um, i say the best phone on T-Mobile, uh, would probably be the, either the H excuse me, the HTC Sensation, or the, uh, T-Mobile G2X. Now, the, the G2X has, is just stock Android, the HTC Sensation has, um, Sense UI, and so, if you like stock Android, I'd go with the G2X. If you don't, I'd go with the Sensation uh, Quadrant Standard. There we go. Okay, I'm going to check Facebook one more time before we go. Uh, okay, let me specify, would you want to get the LG D-Lite or the HT7? Oh, that's a very, very simple question. The LG D-Lite is a flip phone, and the HT7 is a smartphone, so I would, of course, go for the HT7. Um, easily. It's just going to be a whole lot more useful. Okay. Uh, okay. Back to Ustream. Mine lasts like two hours with heavy use. Wow, that's terrible battery life. Um, have you managed to try the video chat for Skype on Android? Uh, I don't believe so yet. No. Do you think it's likely that the iPhone 5 will be on Sprint? You know, We've heard those rumors, and I honestly don't know, you know, like I said, you know, we have heard the rumors, so it's a possibility, but we really have no idea until uh, Apple actually releases the phone. That's when we'll know. Okay, uh, do you think BlackBerry is making a good comeback? Not right now. It's 5 o'clock. That's my computer, it's 5 o'clock. Not right now, um, but it's possible. I want to answer this last question I got about... Um, the uh, typical, the average quadrant standard um, numbers for the Optimus One phone, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna check, I'm gonna log out. Uh, do you think Sense 3.0 is heaviest skin now, especially with the transitions now? Do you think Sense 3.0 is heavy? Okay, okay. Um, to me, I think Moto Blur is heavy. Now there may be different design elements, but just in performance, it seems like Moto Blur has more of an effect. On the device that it's run that you know is running it, so um, I you know I've never heard of a phone having problems you know or slowing down because of HTC Sense, um, but you know it's a possibility. Okay, and the test is still running. Looks like it's even been slowed down. I was running a Quadrant Standard test on this phone. So anyway, um, that's it for this week. Uh, thank you guys for coming. If you missed anything, I'm going to be uploading this video on YouTube so you can watch it there. 
Uh, I'll have also, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can check the description box, even though you've probably already done this. You can check the description box and I'll have the timeline of the topics. You don't have to watch the whole thing. You can jump around with the topic you wanted to listen to. But I'll be back next Friday, 5 p.m. Eastern Time, of course, on our Ustream channel and our Facebook page. You can follow me on Twitter. My screen name is It's My Job to Know. Uh, also on Facebook, every Tuesday I do another open Q&A where it's just with comments. You just leave a comment and I'll try to answer it. It's not with the video. And then Aaron does the same thing on Friday. So quadrant standard test for this Optimus one was 392, which is really bad. Um, anyway, but thanks guys for watching and I will see you guys next week. Get ready for the abrupt ending. <laughs> uh, I'll see you guys next week. Bye.